The following content is not suitable for children. You got that heavy stubble growing, George. Your beard, you, you haven't shaved for a few days. Are you doing that because uh, you know that the signs of attraction says that women like men who kind of grow a light beard, that that's better than clean shaven? And Everyone's learning my tricks, Lori. What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know if I like this science thing, giving away all these little cheats that some of us use. So, so well, let's do that today. Let's talk about, we're getting a lot of Q&A from our listeners around the science of attraction and do people fake it? And we're just going to take an episode to answer some of these questions and have some fun. Okay. Welcome to Foreplay Radio, Couples and Sex Therapy. I'm Lori Watson, your sex therapist. And I'm George Fallon, your couples therapist. And we are passionate about talking about sex and helping you develop a way to talk to each other. Our mission is to help our audience develop a healthier relationship to sex that integrates the mind, the heart, and the body. So before we answer some questions, how's... uh? You're doing a lot of working out. How's your gym time going, Lori? Right. I'm going to camp this summer almost camp. every day. Wow. <laughs> My trainer the other day, he's he's uh, started uh, new exercises, and he calls them good girl, bad girl exercises. All right. I don't know <laughs> you where know, this the, is going. The adductors but... and the abductors, you know, the ones where your legs, you're building the inner part of your leg or the outer part of your leg. Anyway, it was hilarious. He knows I'm a sex therapist, so he... He He's just made it fun funny. <laughs> made it funny. Woo. He's a kid. He's we might have kid. to have him on this show. Yeah. <laughs> good girl, bad girl these... exercises. Good girl, bad girl Strengthening exercises. Strengthen those leg exercises. That's pretty good, Lori. Pretty good. Well, well you're always you're... saying, right, that men are visual. So I'm trying to, trying to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into this attraction. What's the science saying, Lori? Okay, so it's true. Given a heavy beard or just light stubble or clean shaven, women apparently like heavy stubble on a man's face. That That's more attractive. All right. So just don't shave for a few days, man. Save yourself. <laughs> George is so smiling, women, but he's women not are, saying Women anything. are visual too, I guess, here, huh? Women are visual. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think attraction, right? What draws us to a partner? Yeah, definitely visual okay. uh, as well. And also that some of it is building muscle is good, but not too much, not overly developed bodies. You're wearing your favorite color, which is blue. Is blue your favorite color? Probably. And those beautiful blue eyes. That's why you wear blue. But if you're trying to attract somebody, wearing red apparently is the ticket very interesting. <laughs> I can see. I no, can I see. have this list of what makes women attractive and right again, it's, it goes both ways. Okay, let's hear that. What do they say about that? Same thing that men find women in red incredibly attractive. Women find men in red incredibly attractive. Ah. Red is the color that science keeps saying on both sexes really pops up and gets those erotic juices flowing. And that's why our foreplay colors are red and black. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. Yeah. You should just yeah. put some stubbles on the letters and we'll be all set. <laughs> Absolutely. Or a red dress, the red vixen in the, in the red dress. We'll have to find somebody like that. And maybe what? They like red lipstick. I have a son who is all about a woman in red lipstick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the list of the men liking red lipstick, big smiles, hips. You know, the, the visual things we'd expect to see. Mm, the hips. Men like the Swaying way a woman walks. Hips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Showing off your arms. An interesting one on this list was keeping the waterworks to a minimum, not showing lots of emotion. But tears are kind of confusing, I think, oftentimes for men. Yeah, I think a lot of times tears mean that the man did something wrong. Right, it's mm -hmm. it hits the failure trigger, so it's it's a mm. turn off, it's a break. Mm -hmm. Subtly mimicking what he says, copycat, letting him know that what he's saying is important. Mm. So just reflection, you think? Yeah, I think that reflection using his words and using his words, right? Mm -hmm. That we all have a, a narcissistic side to us, right? 
So knowing that your words are being repeated is a turn on. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who does that, a, a male friend who repeats my very word, like whatever I'm saying, he'll pick up on one of the words and he'll use it like, yeah, this. And it does that reflection. It's like, I always feel on track with him. Right. Like You're that. really good at that too. You're good at reflecting. So, I <laughs> okay, mean, these so lists, what else? These lists, what? They're talking about the visual, right? They're this. talking, well, that's what attraction is, right? It's yeah. not about all these other things that might be more emotional and deeper and conversations. And we talk about best, the body, the spirit, the erotic mind. This is really just the, that instant chemistry stuff. Like, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that, boom, sparks that attraction? Mm hmm. So yeah, a lot of these are visual for both. You know, is that man driving a nice car? Now, I know you pay attention to the shoes. What do those shoes look like? Actually, you know? I don't pay attention to shoes. Other women pay attention to okay. shoes. Okay. Well, again, good information. If you want to give yourself the best chance, you're going out. You got a nice car. You got this beard going. You're wearing red. You got a nice pair of shoes on. <laughs> you know, this. You know, you're giving yourself a better chance. That's right. That's right. And if you're wearing a hot red dress and red lipstick and swinging your hips and feeling a little free, that'd be great. Yeah. Smiling, sure. laughing. Those are things that show our interest. Show Laughter is both important for uh, both. Yeah. We're charmed by each other, right? Yep. Yeah, that's nice. So not so different after all, are we? Nope. Okay. So I have a... A question from a listener who says that after he moved in with his girlfriend, he's been finding that rather than wanting to have sex at night like they used to do, he's wanting to just do Netflix and truly chill or cook together or go off and do independent things like play his computer games. And he's like, why am I sort of more drawn to the cozy right now than the sexy? And is this going to be a problem? That's a good question. I think there's something around familiarity and being a best friend and domesticated that you, you get away from those things that you used to do, building anticipation, getting yourself ready. Those separation could kind of make your mind work a little bit harder towards this goal mm -hmm. where, you know, you're both in sweatpants laying around, not brushing your teeth, kind of. Ooh. <laughs> well, it sometimes happens to couples who get a little Ooh. too comfortable with each other. You know, I think there's a balance, too. I mean, there's times, right? It's a rainy Saturday and sitting around and watching movies and being relaxed. So that's good time. That's bonding it's as awesome. well. Yeah. I mean, we don't always have to be flirtatious and wearing the red vixen dress or the red shirt. I mean, sometimes, yeah, in relationship, being cozy is, is great. I'm going to order a pair of red underwear. I want to see what that does. <laughs> Did you have to tell us that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. Just I'm going to just strut around yeah. this. I'm going to do a test here. They're going to see for my listeners how it works, all right? <laughs> okay, I'm doing this for, for science. Yes, this is for science. <laughs> for the sake of science, we're yes. going to check in with George a little bit later and see how the red underwear trick went. If he got more sex. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so our solution <laughs> for this young man is... When you're laying around playing, <laughs> doing Netflix, make sure you're wearing your red underwear. Is yeah. that right? Hey, listen, just that he's thinking about the red underwear is probably enough to start getting himself going a little bit. <laughs> right, but I think it's a great question that he listen to your own body. If you're getting a little bit too comfortable, if your desire is not being triggered, it probably means you're creating an environment that's leaning a little bit too much in the cozy department. Mm -hmm. And you got to do things a little intentionally to kind of move that direction a little bit. And I think too, I mean, he said he's moved in with his girlfriend. So probably before when they're just dating, the way they schedule the evening is sex is, you know, going to be there. Right. And suddenly they have all this time together and they're not necessarily intentional about, okay, when are we going to have sex and how are we going to anticipate that and build that excitement? It's easy. It's easy to slip into habits of just mm -hmm. being brotherly, sisterly. Yep. Yeah. Such good advice. I mean, you just have to be intentional. I love mm -hmm. that this guy's identifying, hey, what's going on here with me? I'm not finding myself where I used to be. 
That's the key because once you can identify that, you can just start doing some of those moves that got you there in the, in the first place. Right? You might need a little bit of separation. You might need to kind of take a jog and take a shower and just think about things and get yourself. I, to me, the key is anticipation. Mm -hmm. The anticipation for him is really low. They're just, you know, hanging out, not thinking about it. Mm. I have a person that I know who's really good at this. She loves to have kind of an overlap of sexy with cozy. So when they're mm. cooking in the kitchen, she turns on dance music and is, is playful and flirtatious. She says stuff like, you know, is this dance taken, sir? And comes up to her partner and starts to flirt with him and dance with him. And she says, you know, I like that. I'm not saying I necessarily want to have sex in that moment, but I like our interactions to be sexy as well as just, you know, mundane cooking dinner together. And so she's like, you know, I, I just want more play and she'll plant a juicy kiss and, you know, kind of just wants him to enter that moment with her. I like it. I'm trying to think about what could he do while he's doing dishes that's doing the same kind of vibe that's trying to say, because he didn't do dishes when they were going on dates, mm -hmm. right? They're going to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now he's got the logistics of doing dishes. How do you do that in a sexy way, Laurie? <laughs> well, what I suggested is no. <laughs> I'm making too Dishes much in a red underwear again. <laughs> I suggested he throw her up on the counter every once in a while, and uh -huh. you know, just in response, that that might be sexy too. Might mm. be fun. Forget the dishes. Even if you don't act on it, just out of allowing his brain to think that turns the dishes or tell into her or suggest it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, let's come back and get into another question. Frustrating low libido can be, well, frustrating. Sound familiar? Visit addyi.com slash foreplay and complete your online consultation today to see if Addy or Flabanserin is right for you. Addy is for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive low sexual desire disorder, HSDD, who have not had problems with low sexual desire in the past and who have low sexual desire no matter the type of sexual activity, the situation, or the sexual partner. The low sexual desire is troubling to them and is not due to a medical or mental health problem, problems in the relationship, or medicine or other drug use. Addy is not for use in men or to enhance sexual performance. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is increased if you drink one to two standard alcoholic drinks close in time to your Addy dose. Wait at least two hours after drinking before taking Addy at bedtime. Your risk of severe low blood pressure and fainting is also increased if you take certain prescriptions, over-the-counter or herbal medications, or have liver problems. Low blood pressure and fainting can happen when you take Addy even if you don't drink alcohol or take other medicines. Sleepiness, sometimes serious, can occur. Common side effects include dizziness, nausea, tiredness, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep, and dry mouth. See full PI, including box warning at addy.com forward slash PI or call 844-PINK-PILL. Visit addyi.com slash foreplay. We at Foreplay are excited about Addy, and to help share the love, our listeners can now schedule their Addy consultation for only $10. To see if Addy is right for you, visit addy.com and use the coupon code foreplay at checkout to redeem this offer. That's code foreplay at addyi.com. Hey guys, our couples retreat is coming again October 1st. We're so excited to be offering this to you. We want to put it in your minds because right now, if you register early, you can get a discount. Please find us on our website on Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy to register, and it'll be under the resource section. We're holding our early bird discount for the first 20 paid in full registered couples. So sign up today. George, this writer says, I've been faking it for 23 years. Ooh have no idea how to let him know that I'm not having orgasms. What do you suggest? I refer to you on this one, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's, it's uh, killer. It's a, it's, it's, you know, once you start faking, it gets easy and easy to keep doing it. It gets harder and harder to tell the truth. And before you know it, 23 years have passed by. So it's a tough place. And I'm, I'm glad that she's saying, I, you know, I, I want to tell the truth. I don't want to live this way anymore. I mean, I think that's where change begins with the desire for something different, with something better. Mm -hmm. 23 years. She's got to be a really good fake. Gosh. And maybe really unselfish. <laughs> that's, oh, it's, again, it's a beautiful thing to do to, to love somebody and serve somebody, even when you're not having the gratification of it. Uh, I mean, I, but it's, 
I, I imagine what he's going to feel, right? Just anger, like a failure. Betrayal. Maybe betrayal. Mm -hmm. Like, how could you not tell me this? How could you fake this? Ooh, it's going to be tough. Yeah. It is also, I would like to think, you know, an opportunity in what has he been missing? How has he not been dialed in or as tuned as he could be to kind of not notice? Mm -hmm. I mean, there has to be some distance built in that, you're lying for 21 years and your partner doesn't even realize it. Exactly. So okay. again, this is an opportunity for closeness. Ah, right. I mean, I think it would be natural for him to be angry mm -hmm. because that's going to be safer than looking at, how did I not know that? How could I have believed that? That I mean, you haven't been getting pleasure this whole time or enough pleasure? Oof. Um, so what do, what do we want her to do? Rip the Band-Aid off. So we want her to tell him, you know mm -hmm. what, I'm not actually having orgasms. Yeah, I think there's a lot of context. You know, maybe she didn't know. I mean, I think a lot of women go into a marriage not really knowing how to have orgasms or how things work. We all have assumptions. We all have these myths that we believe. You know, there's a lot of misinformation. You know, I think... To say, I, you know, I, I really wasn't sure. I, I came from a loving place. I wanted you to feel good. I mean, I think we're constantly stressing here. The intent was good. It was to protect and not hurt feelings, you know, but the impact of the lie has been bad on both of them, mm -hmm. right? So she's having the courage to stand up and to do that differently. And he might not be able to hear that in the short term, but in the long term, he will, because what she's doing is brave and what she's doing is heading in the direction of health. Absolutely. She might say, you know, I heard on this podcast, this foreplay radio podcast, that uh, I actually need a whole lot of clitoral stimulation, mm. and that will give me this this ex you know this huge experience of orgasm. You know, I I think I probably been been mistaking my arousal for orgasm, and I'm not really getting the the pop that you seem to be getting. And I know I make noises and I tell you it was good for me, but I think there might be a way that I, it can be better. And I'd love to try that. Would you be willing to give me that? I mean, it still is bonding. It's still connecting. It's still arousal. There's been great things that they've been doing for 23 years. Mm, she just I hasn't hope. gotten to the, you know, the cherry on top of this process. And that she's willing to fake that to make him feel good. It makes sense. So I like that you're just trying to be delicate with the timing of it all and using your words to soften the blow. Mm -hmm. You know, but that if she can let him know what to do so she actually had an orgasm, that's the target. That is the target. Yeah. And maybe she, it, it sounds like the way she wrote it, she knew she wasn't having orgasms, so she knows how to have an orgasm herself right. um you know not she's not asking what you know how do i have one but you know sometimes people are afraid to do that with their partner it feels so vulnerable to surrender to that moment and so maybe it starts out not just protecting him but protecting herself but people get into this place and i think having orgasms in your partner's presence requires a lot of vulnerability and telling him this it's yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, but it's so important to be physically intimate and stop the emotional distance. So that's good for you. Yeah, there's so much to this question and you need more of the context. I mean, is she attracted to her partner? Sometimes we're not attracted to our partner. You know, we don't want to hurt their feelings, but we want to keep a relationship going and the kids and the family. So there's so many layers to this of what motivates the, the lying and, you know, are they in a place where they can do it differently? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're always working towards new moves. So this is her start of a new move. Mm -hmm. And I hope that despite the shock and the betrayal that her husband would be able to get on board and see the opportunity for, for a better relationship. And I, I mean, he does have some responsibility. I mm -hmm. will never forget the man. He came in and he said, Lori, I've had 30 partners and none of them needed clitoral stimulation. They all orgasmed. He just was the exception to the math. He hit the blue streak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Here's an interesting question, Lori. We have a listener write in saying, 
he's in a gay relationship and you know a lot of odd vice sounds great but it, we speak to heterosexual normative language in in our podcasts mm -hmm. and he wanted to know how applicable is what we're talking about in his relationship mm -hmm. yeah i appreciate that he's listening to us we have been targeting more heterosexual couples but i think what we say in terms of attachment theory and the pursue withdraw it works for the couples that i see too who are gay lesbian i mean definitely this is important and i'm grateful he's listening and i i guess we've also heard people say you know that they feel excluded from us because we don't use examples mm -hmm. of gay and lesbian couples that we are speaking just to heterosexual couples and i know that there are heterosexual couples who are conservative listening to us thinking what do you mean you're talking about gay and lesbian couples but i think for us our heart is helping couples who are committed to each other keep sex vibrant and alive and erotic regardless of their sexual orientation right and so I, too, kind of apologize if people feel excluded, right? Because mm -hmm. the spirit of this, I mean, when we quote Peggy Kleinsplatz and great lovers, it doesn't matter sexual orientation, right? What they're able to do in, in being vulnerable and present and part of something bigger than themselves cuts across genders mm -hmm. and how people identify themselves. Mm -hmm. But certainly... In a brevity of time in these quick podcasts, sometimes it feels easier to just kind of give the typical example, yeah. right? But if doing that makes people feel like they're left out, they're not being represented again, I apologize for that. Yeah, and I, I think that some of the focus is on the difference because of, you know, two different bodies have challenges mm -hmm. that maybe two same bodies don't have. And, you know, I think that's been part of our focus is how do we manage this commitment to monogamy and understanding when we're coming from two very different bodies, but the principles work for different sexual orientations. So do you have an example for us? From your yeah. I mean, I, I do think there's something question. also to be said about systems in place that could make it more challenging for gay or trans couples, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, I was working with a gay couple and just doing what I would do with any couple and kind of help them have these vulnerable conversations and this real bonding moment, right, where they're both crying, holding each other, loving each other in places that they never loved before, mm. right? And that just feels so human and beautiful to be part of, you know, and, and usually when a couple like that leaves my office, you know, I just look out the window and I just like, that's the afterglow. You just see them holding hands <laughs> and the sun comes out. It's just a great feeling. So I watch this couple as they walk outside my office and all of a sudden they let go of each other's hands, right? They don't want to be seen in public holding hands. Oh. That the system in place kind of, it gives them a level of pressure. Mm. They face challenges that a heterosexual couple wouldn't face. Yep. Right. To just know that there's a pressure out there. Uh, there's absolutely. there's consequences to kind of two men holding hands, you know, in this part of where I, my office is. It's just it was really I felt so sad for them. Mm, they had all this beautiful connection in your office, deeply seeing each other and feeling attachment. And then they go out there and enter the world. They have to not show that. That's not show that. That is painful. And that's a level of work and stress that a heterosexual couple wouldn't have to face. Absolutely. So there are these challenges that, you know, add more complex trauma and, and, and mm -hmm. deeper layers to, to make this a bit harder at times. Yeah. More challenges, Yeah, especially the fact that they're sexually connected. That's what they have to hide. Right. Right. Yeah. Tough. And the lack of that awareness you know, and a lot of times we, I can fall into that too when we're using heterosexual normative language. You know, it continues to kind of make people not in that category feel excluded. Mm -hmm. Surely. So I think we all have our work to create more yeah. safety. I, I was just, you know, thinking about a podcast that we did recently. I was listening to it and editing it. And we were talking about what turns men on. And I was thinking, you know what? This all turns me on, you know, mm -hmm. as a, a woman who has more sexual pursuing parts inside, I, I was thinking, yeah, I, I can see this in men, but I can see this in me. 
mm-hmm. you know, everything we said. And so I think sometimes when we go binary, men, women, we're excluding people of any gender of what they might feel. So I thank That's you a, for bringing this up. Well, it's it's a great point and we're we're trying to help but sometimes unintentionally our help could actually cause more hurt. And mm-hmm. all we do welcome that feedback. You know, we, we'll, we'll keep trying to make people feel included and we're in this mess together. So we can't fit people into neat little boxes. <laughs> sometimes we try to do that in the, you know, 20 minute episodes that we have, but you know, life can be more complicated than that. And, and we really, we really just appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Keep it hot, everyone. So for all you therapists out there listening to our show, I really want you to check out successinvulnerability.com, our new training website that we believe is taking online therapist training to the next level. It's so focused on moment by moment, practical moves, less theory to really get people to have immediate success. Right? We're trying to measure targets of change so we can see if we're on target or we need to adjust and the feedback we're getting is really excited. We're incorporating that feedback to continually adjust and to change the schedule. And come join us, SIV team. Also, I'll just put a plug in for it as well, because I am one of the learners. This kind of instruction just is not out there. How to do the micro moves that change people's hearts toward each other. It's so good. So it's reasonably priced. I just encourage you to go over to successandvulnerability.com and sign up. It's great training. Call in your questions to the Foreplay Question voicemail. Dial 833-MY-4PLAY. That's 833-MY, the number four, play. And we'll use the questions for our mailbag episodes. All content is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for therapy by a licensed clinician or as medical advice from a doctor. This podcast is copyrighted by 4Play Media.